Now, so uh, now, uh, but still, the innovation here was important. So I came back last year and started this uh, story of MLAB, which I'll be talking about. So, so you can you can go through all of these. So uh, these are the um, uh, things of other. <laughs> so probably uh, many people uh, understands about um, Silicon Valley and what Japanese corporates, or not only Japanese, but uh, many uh, corporate tends to do. So open innovation, not embedded here. Uh, diversity creates value here, but typical Japanese company lack diversity um, and action towards. So you have to commit through action here. What do you want to do? What you got to do? Well, you can contribute, but most of it, like this research part, is uh, research, 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 gather information, okay, just take, take, take. Start small, uh, perfect plan, Japanese. Uh, fail fast, never. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> save from Silicon Valley, actually, uh, if you uh, even send it to uh, uh, Japan, your headquarters, it doesn't work well. Um, it doesn't grow on Japanese soil, I'd say. And, uh, of course, uh, many people here are uh, working hard, uh, but generally speaking, especially for compared to other countries, um, low presence in Japan. So, um, <clears throat> as I said, so uh, some corporate or many corporate tend to send in one guy or a woman here and have, uh, force them to uh, gather information what's going on here and send the report. But this person doesn't mean that uh, she or he, he or she has a network here. It, from the beginning, it's a challenge. And after like uh, six months, one year, uh, still having a hard time, then the headquarters says, okay, what's, what did you get as a result? Oh, okay, you're coming back. <laughs> I've seen in the past six years many of these cases. So um, that's one of the clues that we thought about this MLAC. Okay, so. Um, we just recently uh, um, press released this uh, UK newspaper, so some of you are, saw mm -hmm. the article. Um, it's a <coughs> joint collaborating uh, initiative of corporates, I'd say. And the uh, name of M, M Lab, of course, uh, the uh, primary intention was Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi Group Company together in our office in downtown Palo Alto physically work together from within the people from uh, cross industrial uh, with their own uh, specialties and so uh, that was the um, original M but uh, uh, it doesn't need to be Mitsubishi actually if you see the member company on the right top box uh, of course, Tokyo Marine is a Mitsubishi company, Kirin as well, Mitsubishi Electric, and FG. But we also have Asahi Kase and Fujifilm, which uh, we uh, have good relationship. And does have the uh, similar kind of challenge, have been having the same, similar kind of challenge. So uh, now I think more the mid M means mixed. <laughs> and uh, so uh, with this mixed diversity, um, creating business in the same uh, office space. Uh, this is the um, uh, aim of this uh, company. So diversity, uh, in this uh, former slide, I, uh, we see what's happening here is a lot of value from different kind of angle, uh, kind of a, uh, gathering together, sometimes discussing, and creating new something. Uh, in some terms, I think uh, uh, it's impossible is a word that the East Coast people sometimes use, I guess. Um, so, uh, to increase that kind of possibility, we needed this kind of diversity. Um, even if Mitsubishi Corporation have seven business groups from uh, uh, ramen to uh, uh, rockets, um, um, it, we don't have the uh, expertise for certain areas, of course. We don't have everything uh, for technology, especially um, manufacturers, and, uh, partners. These are necessity. So uh, gathering these people in one office uh, was a uh, uh, and another another uh, important uh, uh, thing is uh, we both have research arm as well as the business development arm. So business development is run by these uh, <coughs> companies as well as our business groups uh, people. Um, what tends to happen if you're uh, a few people is that uh, a 
okay, research, got this kind of business idea or uh, um, uh, seed, then you kind of move toward into it and forget the research. So, but if you forget about what's happening in, around you, um, sometimes you miss the opportunity or uh, uh, doesn't notice the um, mistake that possibly you could have made. Maybe this technology is not the uh, right way. This business model may not work. So continuous research arm is uh, fundamental, as we think. So continuing uh, research, gathering information, that's still there. But uh, with the uh, business, business development arm, which uh, uh, gets the feed from the research arm. And also the research team, team will get the raw, real information that the business development team gets in the field and feed it back. So that kind of keeps the freshness of the research. It's not like, um, I would say, consultant team in the middle of New York City or Tokyo. So this uh, live information feedback right next to your desk, desk for business development, this is one of the key elements. And of course, um, action is the um, uh, uh, important part. Uh, Sinoto-san also mentioned about uh, starting something here small is important. Um, we are already starting to get some seed ideas with this. Um, we, it's been like a few months now, but uh, um, uh, everybody kind of, um, although not every company here are physically here yet, uh, some are coming in the next few months, but um, we are already generating a lot of information uh, or uh, seed ideas. Um, so uh, eventually if we can get some kind of a concrete idea, We'll move forward with the POC call, so the um, a proof of concept kind of a project, and start quick here in the back. So uh, this is kind of an uh, idea, or this is the um, structure that we just formed, and uh, we're uh, uh, starting this activity, um, gathering everybody in our office in Palo Alto, and I already starting to see some small uh, results. So uh, even if we some of our members talk with some of the ventures, promising ones in the valley. Uh, and after that, uh, explaining about this structure, they say, oh, let me fix one more time. <laughs> that kind of a re uh, reaction um, comes up. So uh, that's about it. OK. Thank you, Yasushi, and Ping Tom. So um, what I'd like to do next is then um, ask uh, Alex and Don if they have uh, comments or questions. Or ask you, Nick and Ethan, and then um, after getting initial some initial comments, then we can open the floor to questions. Uh, but before that, if we can just take maybe 15 seconds or so to stretch and <laughs> <sighs> everybody come on, <laughs> don't make me come over there. Come on. <laughs> it's too much. It's too crazy. It's too crazy. <laughs> Thank you for modeling the way she's the president, so people will do it. <laughs>
which I think, I think is actually quite typical. If you look at the Silicon Valley and the companies that actually start here, right, they actually have very, very, very different mentality, very different time scale, very different clock speed, uh, very different approach, right? You know, level of ambition, that level of risk, um, the ability to accept failure, the ability to experiment faster. So I think to me this is a clear illustration really of successes and how you arrive to those, but also the clear differences between kind of what the uh, large corporations and large Japanese corporations uh, do and how they approach it versus uh, how many of the small and local companies operate. Yeah, I guess I would agree with the, the sentiment that you have to kind of be in this for the long run if you want to be successful. You know, it's not it's not something where you sort of come in and are successful and leave again. And, and I think you know, there's often that sort of dread when something bad goes on in, uh, in headquarters. And, you know, what's that going to mean for, for those of us here in the, in the Silicon Valley? A, a friend of mine works at uh, at Samsung, and you know, he was you know with the Samsung Note Seven caught on fire. He goes, "Oh, there goes our program, right?" Because you know, every time there's sort of a downturn at corporate, there's always a chance of it, uh, of it, of it kind of going back. I guess I, I do have some interesting after, after listening to the presentation, some uh, some questions I'd like to ask, and I'll, I guess I'll start with with Nick. Um, you know, if you look at some of the the business models that that people are talking about in Silicon Valley, let's take Uber as a as a great example, right? Um, in some degree, what they really want to do is destroy the automobile industry, right? I mean, what they want to do is, is change the automobile business as something that you buy and you park in your garage, and um, instead they want to do, you know, automobiles as a service, right? There's a, you know, now you pay somebody to drive you around, but, you know, they're sort of their end game with the, the lab they have and what they're trying to do is, is self-driving cars. So a self-driving car comes and picks you up, drops you off, you don't have to park it, you know, you don't have to pay insurance on it, that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm kind of curious when you when you see innovations like that, and you have to kind of go back to Tokyo and explain that. Um, how do you? What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, Uber uh, valuation, Honda is pretty much the same. Fifty <laughs> billion, so it's, uh, what sixty or so. so yeah, it's uh, pretty much the same <laughs> value today they build. Um, well, surprisingly, uh, many people in Japan never have never ridden Uber. So they heard about it, they know it, uh, but they, they've never used it. So the first thing I do is invite them to here, Silicon Valley, and let them use it, uh, Uber. As so, so I said, don't rent a car, don't, don't use a taxi. From the airport, call Uber. Oh, oh, by the way, put, put your app in your phone before you fly. <laughs> Activate, you know, make an account and activate it. Um, then, you know, uh, it works globally. Uh, so, land in San Jose Airport, call Uber, and the Uber app tells you where to wait, and with what kind of car is coming to pick you up. Um, that's an amazing, amazing experience for many people, many Japanese visitors to my office. Uh, they, it's illegal in Japan, Uber is, uh, so there's no Uber service uh, in Japan. Uh, but they were surprised how comfortable it is, how drive, nice drivers are, how clean the car is, car, and uh, you know, everything is smooth. And no cash, you know, dealing with cash or anything, no tipping, calculation, so it's super convenient. Um, so they realize about it very well after experiencing it. Um, so what I'm telling to the Honda management is work with them. Uh, I, I don't think we can beat them. <laughs> They're already pretty big. Uh, so find a way to work with them. Um, so uh, that's what I'm proposing and doing. Uh, we're not really. Uh, doing much with Uber, but we announced a partnership with Waymo, uh, Google. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, it's moving forward. So uh, yeah, uh, you know, collaboration. We we are good at building great cars uh, to each customer's uh, need or comfort or whatever. Uh, they're good at building a platform, 
cloud and apps and and gather a bunch of users instantaneously almost. Uh, so they're good at that. We are good at different things. So let's give up. That's that's what I'm, I'm saying. Don, I you might have some other questions. Yeah, I guess um, looking at the at the game industry, I was kind of interested to see. You know, interested in doing uh, investment in different geographies, right? Because you know, like my kids at home, the games they play, a lot of them are made by companies like Supercell, right? Which is in Finland. Um, right, right. Or Mojang, or, you know, so, so there's kind of a global market for games. So I'm kind of curious, you know, what's the real advantage of, of, what, of what you're doing and in investing in the United States as opposed to, you know, it's kind of a, there, there's a worldwide portfolio of people, because there's low barriers to entry in the game business, essentially, right? So there's, Studio is almost literally everywhere. So what's what's interesting about doing this in Silicon Valley or the United States? I see. Yeah. So uh, so it's a sort of interesting question. So like, uh, uh, please, uh, can you show us show the um, my slides? Just a moment. Yeah. So uh, so it's difficult because simply simply uh, I answer the question. It's not just like a, it's not like a, uh, ah, sorry, we'll go back to the, uh, this slide. Uh, it's not just like a good or a great advantage uh, so, or have the office, sorry, have the development studio in the United States. It's actually true. So that, because of this, actually, so we are now so like uh, transitioning to the development studio from the US to the Australia, or also uh, some uh, uh, operation studio from US to the uh, other regions. <laughs> so uh, the advantage is the U US is only uh, marketing. Marketing technology is actually the so, uh, number one so like, advanced country. So like, uh, you know, Facebook, uh, sorry, Facebook, so advanced, so like, uh, uh, other sorry, like, uh, other networking stuff also uh, not the SE, not the SEO, sorry, what's the sorry, like, uh, Google Ads, right? So like this stuff is actually so really good advantage in the uh, US headquarters. So actually, so we already move the development function and the, uh, operation function from the US to the other regions. The uh, so like uh, Supercell also, uh, actually it's more like a good game developer or more good game designer is actually not the Silicon Valley. Uh, yeah, maybe Silicon Valley, but uh, it's so spread it to the uh, all, all over the uh, globally. So actually you, Europe is a really good so like a game developer, also Australia, also Japan as well. Uh, United States is more like a tech, uh, tech oriented and money oriented uh, company. So, uh, in terms of the advantage of the game company in the United States, it's like uh, actually the information marketing, uh, and uh, so it's a, but uh, still so there's a couple of advantages. So take the uh, machines on example, uh, parallel based game developer company. So their game approach is really, really uh, different, unique way uh, compared to the traditional way. They are doing the machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, driving the game more, uh, sort of more efficiently. So it's like a really Silicon Valley, uh, US-like game operation. So uh, US headquarters is uh, like, uh, take these advantages, so like, uh, what kind of the uh, frontier tech, what kind of the trend can be applied to the game. The actual game running is uh, so uh, maybe uh, better to running uh, not only United States, so because that's like a, also like a United States like a, uh, engineering cost is so also really high. So also some cases so like a, they are really good at the machine learning AI or blah, blah, blah. So like a game engineer is, so you know, European guys is also like a game. So European is really so good at so game development as well, and also Australia, Japan. So it might be a good idea not developing the game in the United States, also transition to the US. So difficult to 
say to answer the still so have, have the advantage combination the US frontier tech idea also US so like a trend uh, in the way of the marketing in the way of the so efficiency to the development but the actual development is uh, uh, maybe better to be the outside the US so this is a, like a current uh, our situation so actually so now, so we have the big surgery in the, uh, Australia uh, based on the Twitch acquired uh, two years ago. Also, uh, we are now uh, so doing the uh, EU, trying to do the EU operation in terms of the game operation, like uh, what kind of the zombie is good or so what the gun is, uh, looks, right, looks good. So it's now so try, try to move the right the stuff in the EU. But still, so United States, we are focused on the how can we apply the uh, like a machine learning AI, what is the cool uh, machine learning AI techniques for the game we are exploring the in Silicon Valley. Also like a CTO or like a product manager, director, like these guys is basically on the United States. The, but the actual so operational starts in now spread into the global. Uh, this is my answer. So shall we open the floor to questions? Well, nobody has a question. I'll have a question. Um, <laughs> well, let me start first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm having that my microphone. Um, I currently work at a startup, and startup, as you know, many other companies, everybody knows, funding is a problem, and finding an office is high rent in the Silicon Valley. You know, labor is expensive. Um, one of the things I've seen is that Chinese government. Uh, invested a lot in creating incubators as well as Chinese companies as well. So there's a lot of Chinese run incubators with you know, maybe a dozen or more, two dozen small companies here in Silicon Valley. Um, I'm wondering why Japanese cannot do that. I know like Jeff Roll is trying to do something like that, but never really kind of took off as big as I've seen um, by the Chinese. So uh, I guess. What's what's there preventing Japanese, you know, sponsor uh, incubators or labs? <coughs> so it's uh, maybe better to ask, uh, answer to for me. So like, yeah, after I'm doing the uh, so investment to the uh, startups in the U.S. and globally, also taking a look at Japan. So so you you mean that in terms of the Japan government? That's the government, but companies do it. Companies, so, uh, so generally say that in, in the startups, startup side, so why not, why uh, not so many Japanese guys couldn't start the startups here, and why uh, Chinese or recently uh, India, also uh, Israel, also Canada, Australia, so there's a lot of any other companies uh, started the company. Uh, in the United States. Mm, so, yeah, it's also like, uh, like me, also, so like, uh, so startups, so IT startups is basically uh, running by the relatively younger guys, so 20s, 30s guys. Uh, so, current Japanese uh, 20s, 30s, so uh, really, really uh, few people coming to the uh, United States uh, running the computer science in the United States, but I know that a lot of, lot of uh, students from the China and uh, India, from Canada, running the computer science actually uh, here. So, you know, so even me, so when I'm a uh, university, uh, almost uh, 10 or 15 years ago, I don't have any idea, so how can I work in or how can I uh, move to the Silicon Valley, but China also, uh, Korea, uh, Korea also similar to the Japanese thing. Uh, China, also India, also uh, Eastern Asia country student, also European, uh, Canada guys, so I don't know why they are really connected to the United States Silicon Valley, also they are really eager to the coming to the U US and uh, uh, studying the computer science, it's true. Probably English is one of the problems. So English spoken country students are really easy to come here, it's obvious. But China so it's interesting, so why they make it? So 
maybe if, uh, if I just maybe turn this question around, which is, I would actually argue that the startup support ecosystem in the Valley has so developed over the last two or three or four or five years that you actually don't need to sponsor an incubator. You don't need to actually sponsor a, you know, the services for startups. There are, I think, plenty of uh, companies that offer those services and there is a variety of business models under which they operate. So, so if I look at it from the startup perspective, I would actually suggest that looking at some of those available services and companies that, that actually provide the services to startups, not only alleviates some of the challenges that you described, but also puts you in an environment of much greater diversity, which also helps with actually driving things forward. I was wondering if you can share me uh, your precious advice. Um, a few years ago, um, I introduced a, um, a startup. Could you, you speak a little bit closer to the microphone? I introduced a, 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 a startup to a tier one vendor, and the Silicon Valley office was very excited and very unusually with great speed. The, the, the Detroit office uh, sent <coughs> engineers in a few days also to look at this certain uh, technology. And in a matter of like about a month, um, the SOW was also um, written, co written. Um, however, like three days before the, all the um, legal contracts were going to be uh, finished to to build this prototype to be shown at the Detroit Sorry, Motor Show, closer, okay. yes, at, at the Detroit Motor Show, the headquarters in Japan just torpedoed the project and everything fell apart. And both the, the Japanese company Silicon Valley and Detroit office just bowed a hundred times in apology. And I was wondering if you can give me advice about how to minimize the possibility of uh, such a scenario and how to maximize the possibility of aligning the headquarters um, thinking with the enthusiasm of the local offices. Was how to yes. how how to bring the enthusiasm of the local Silicon Valley ecosystem back to the home base. No, 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 no. actually, um, so um, one time I introduced a startup to a tier one vendor, and you know, and the Silicon Valley office was very excited. And in a matter of three days, the Detroit office also came to look at this technology and. <coughs> Everybody was very enthusiastic and decided to build a prototype with the startup to be shown at the Detroit Motor Show. And the SOW was also um, uh, written and finalized. But a few days before the legal contract was written in order to do this NRE project, the headquarters in Japan torpedoed this project and, and it was completely canceled. So I was wondering if you can give me advice on how to minimize the possibility of headquarters um, completely destroying a project that the U.S. subsidiary engineers get excited about. To come to all the innovations. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say, <clears throat> Well, that's typical, Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, if the uh, branch of you you're talking to in the U.S. Uh, didn't have the authority to do a execute a project, then you know, basically it's controlled by Japan. So good luck. Uh, well, you know, luckily my, my team has the authority to execute 
project without any permission or even asking to Japan. Uh, so we can do that kind of things, and we can uh, exhibit uh, or or publicly showcase it. Uh, we often do that. Um, so it really depends on how the organization is structured. Um, many Japanese corporations, uh, U.S. You know, particularly Silicon Valley is just a branch office, sometimes just one or two people. 